my dad uh, raced and rode his entire life. Um, when I was two and a half, three years old, he pretty much pushed me down the driveway <laughs> without training wheels, and that's how it all started. Uh, I raced BMX at uh, four years old, five and a half under expert is when I was really racing a lot and pretty much raced BMX all growing up, mountain bikes till I was 15, 16, then got racing motocross. Well, when I was young, I looked up to motocross like crazy, but I actually had a 60 when I was seven or eight years old for like a year and that's it. And I was so into racing bicycles that it, the motocross stuff hadn't clicked with me yet. I just wanted to race BMX and I was super passionate about BMX. And then I don't know if I outgrew it, but I started to race mountain bikes and I was really into mountain bikes. And then the progression just went from BMX to mountain bikes to motocross. And um, that was kind of the natural progression. Um, when I was young, I'd, I never really had any interest to race motocross. It was always just about BMX. I think it's a camaraderie about uh, when you're all doing something that's kind of gnarly, you know, motocross is a dangerous sport, BMX is dangerous, mountain bikes, all the stuff that we do is dangerous. And I think there's a camaraderie amongst the people that do it, you know, that we all kind of know that we're um, taking risks, doing a sport that we all love to do. And I think that um, is kind of like the glue that holds the community together. You know, we all back each other and we all, uh, it seems like in our sports, more than stick and ball sports, there's a lot more camaraderie and a lot more help. You know, there's guys that'll loan a rear wheel to somebody to finish a moto, and where in other sports, I don't think it happens. And I think it's a little bit has to do with that it's a gnarly sport, it's dangerous, and you kind of get each other's back a little bit. All my heroes when I was younger were motocross riders. I never really thought that I was gonna be a professional motocross racer. You know, that was never really my intent. I just kind of wanted to ride with Pops and then I never really had the intentions of, of earning a living racing a motorcycle. I just didn't think that it was really in the cards for me, you know. Dad started riding at birthday in 68, 68, 69. He rode there every day. Well, not every day, but he rode there all the time, you know, up until when he passed, which is two weeks before the track closed. And I was there in, you know, in mom's womb, you know, when I was a little kid. And then uh, I used to ride around there when I was, you know, three or four years old on BMX bike watching dad ride. And that's where he taught me to ride on a 60. It's the last place dad and I rode together. So, I mean, I pretty much grew up at birth, but I can't remember, honestly, a week that went by that I did not be at birth. I mean, I lived there, I literally grew, I grew up at track. And when the track went away, you know, dad, you know, I lost dad and a track kind of at the same time. And it was like, I felt like it was a chapter closing in my life a little bit. And then when the, when it reopened, oh man, I was just unbelievable. When the news of it uh, started to come through, I was so excited. I mean, I was just beyond pumped, you know, and then to hear that Dirtworks was doing a lot of the track. I mean, there's so much potential there, you know, and I think the new owners and the new track crew is really realizing that potential because it's a great place you know it's a place for a father to teach his son how to ride it's a place for best buds to go bang bars on the weekend you know it's a it's an awesome place when it was gone it was almost like you lost a part of yourself you know and now with it back and to meet my buddies there and ride all again it's just a blast you know it's a nostalgic feeling almost and to have the track as awesome as it is it's a blast dad taught me how to ride in the back on a 60 with felix the old old owner I could hardly even ride, you know, I'd gas it, wah, 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 you know, like I'd, you know, as a BMXer, I didn't know anything about riding a motorcycle, but it slowly happened. And I mean, almost every time that I went there, dad went, you know, and even when I was racing local pro somewhat seriously and he wasn't riding as much, he'd come every time I was riding, just help me out and coach me, you know, so. And then lately when he was riding a bunch towards the end there, he, we met every Saturday morning there and rode every Saturday morning, you know, and it feels weird to go there without him. Um, that's for sure, um, but I also know he's looking down and he's pumped on it, you know, he's pumped on the track and it almost feels like he's still there a little bit, you know, so, so it's cool, it's hard, but it's cool.
supercross tracks and arena cross tracks there, you know, four or five years. And we had a blast working on, you know, working on it. And we weren't even very good in equipment and we were just kind of figuring it out, but we had a blast. And to watch the Dirtworks guys do their thing and to watch the track crew they have now do their thing, he would, he would just be, you know, he would love it. You know, I've helped out a little bit and learned how to drive a dozer pretty good a little bit and been watering and he would, dad would eat that up, man. He'd be there, he would just absolutely eat that up. He almost, I think he liked doing that kind of stuff more than you like riding. So to see all the TLC and all the love in it and the Tri-City guys have done an unbelievable job and he'd be ecstatic. He'd be absolutely ecstatic.